Hey, 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 welcome to Chrissy's Paint and Craft Parties. Super excited that you're here today because I know it's not October yet, but we're going to be painting an October painting today. So we're going to be doing this boo tree. It's what I call it. It's called a boo tree. It's going to be super cute and I cannot wait to paint with you guys today. All right, let me make sure I'm in the right places that way. Um, you guys can hear me, hopefully. I'll make sure my volume is all the way up. Oh, you know what else? I need to make sure that my phone is not disturbed. Oops, hold on. I'm going to make sure my phone is on not disturb. There we go. And here we are going to paint today. So I'm actually going to be talking about a few things today with you guys. Um, a lot's going on in October. There's so many events happening in October. This is actually my favorite time of year because, man, fall is in the air. And I'm super excited because I put my Halloween decorations, some of my Halloween decorations up yesterday. I know it's not October yet, but I usually start decorating in September for fall. So, like the beginning of September. I'm a little late to to that, so <laughs> I decided to put them out yesterday, but I'm super excited because this is literally my favorite time of year. Um, because make sure I can see you guys' comments. All right, and I'm going to start doing possibly one painting a week. Um, just doing some fall paintings a week and doing some free painting tutorials. So if you want me to do once a week, put once a week in the comments. Or if you just want me to do once a month paintings, um, put it in the comments. I'm actually going to upload this to YouTube. So you can go to my YouTube channel and see all the free painting tutorials that I have there already. But I'm going to add all of these ones that I do here on my Facebook page to YouTube. So you'll be able to watch them later on. Because sometimes they get lost on my page. And um, that way you can just kind of go with, through my playlist. I have a playlist on there that you can kind of go and search whatever you want to paint. So that's kind of what I'm doing um, I'm going to be doing more of these free tutorials for you so you can go and grab your supply list um, and just go paint it by following along um, of what I'm doing. So if you guys are ready to paint, I am ready to paint. I'm super excited. I can't wait to paint this one. This one I'm doing free handed. I do not have a tracer for this one, but if you're in my free group, um, if you're in my free painting group, I will make a tracer for you. I know I was supposed to do a craft la this month, last month, September. It's almost October. Can you believe it? Um, I was supposed to do a free craft, but I was so busy with everything else that I forgot to put the free craft in there. So you're going to get a, you're going to get a double for October. Um, so this is going to be for you guys. I'm going to give you the instructions and I'm going to give you the tracer so that you can come back to this video and watch this video and um, make your own boo tree. All right. Are you guys ready? Because I'm super excited and I can't wait. All right. Let me go ahead and share this to um, my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page to let everybody know where I'm at. And then we'll get started. I'm going to start with black and oops. I'm going to start with black and blue for my background. Um, this is a little dark, so if you don't like dark, um, it would help if it actually let me share. It won't even let me share it. That's super weird. Okay. Um, if you, here we go. Got it. Um, if you want your tree, your, your background to be a lot, um, a lot lighter you can but because it's Halloween almost right we have like what okay it's not almost Halloween we have about 33 days right or 30 I don't know there's 31 days in October I'm not good with math guys so 32 to actually we have 32 days left until Halloween but because I love Halloween so much and this is my favorite time of year I am just doing it early, so. 
Um, okay, that's super weird. I don't know why I won't let me share, but whatever. Okay, I am going to go ahead and switch back over, and I'm going to start. I got my coffee. Hopefully you got your coffee. You got your paintbrushes. So now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to use here. That way when we get started, I kind of go over the supplies that we're using. I'm going to use a uh, wash brush. This is a one inch wash brush. I also have a blending brush. So like I always like to have a dry brush to blend with. So I always have like a dry brush to um, on hand to blend my colors. And then I have a liner brush. This is just a number eight brush. And then I have a number 12 brush. And I really love these um, brushes. This is from Diverse Woodworking. And I really like these brushes because they just do so much, um, they just do so much better and they, that makes the paint go on there really smooth. But also, you gotta make sure you load your brushes right. So, um, that's a key point here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with my background. I'm gonna show you what colors I'm gonna use today. I might change it up. I don't like to just do the same. I didn't thing. understand that. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What was that? <laughs> My phone was trying to talk to me like I was talking to Google or something. That was super weird. I apologize. Um, maybe because my phone's on a button, maybe? No? Yeah, my phone was on a button. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, anyways. So... I may not use the same colors that I describe here, which is totally okay. You do you, and you choose the colors that you want to choose, and be creative with this, okay? Um, but I am going to do a dark background. I kind of wanted to do a black background, but then I want to make it look like more of a night sky. So we're going to do a blue and black, and I don't know where my black went to. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. So I'm just going to do a black and a blue. So these are the colors that I'm going to use, black and blue. I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin orange. If you ever run out of, like, let's say you use pumpkin spice, um, or maybe you run out of, um, this is the stuff, this is the one I use. Oh, this is spice, sorry, spice pumpkin, not pumpkin spice. Like, let's say you run out of spice pumpkin, or even if you run out of pumpkin, um, the color pumpkin. I'm going to show you how to make it yourself. So hold on. Let me see if I can't find my pumpkin. Like the color, the, the paint pumpkin. I'm actually out of pumpkin, which is really surprising for me because I usually have stocked up for... That's not good. I need to stock up on that stuff. I guess I need to go ahead and stock up on my pumpkin. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make pumpkin. You don't necessarily have to buy spice pumpkin or um, the pumpkin jack o I think it's called jack o lantern pumpkin or something like that. I can't find my pumpkin. It's probably in this box over here. Yeah, it's in this box over here of all my paints, my paints that I take for paint parties. So, but I'm going to show you how to use it. So you're just going to grab some yellow. You can actually grab some of this yellow, which is, it's kind of like a yellow, I don't know, like it's like a tan yellow if you wanted to. And then you're just going to grab orange, and I just had my orange in front of me. Okay, that's red. Okay, where did my orange go? Gosh, I just had my orange in front of me, I don't know where it went. Oh. So just some orange. I put this in a um, FIFO bottle. It's just easier to squirt out. Oh, there it is. I found it. And then if that doesn't work, then I'll use this orange. But we're just doing orange and yellow for pumpkin. I'm going to show you. Oh, yellow. Oh, it's actually orange and red. Sorry. Orange and red. So you're going to need some red. I got red over here. I got red over here. I got red everywhere. And then we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to make an, I'm probably going to say this really, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but it's, um, Mesa. I don't know if that's right, <laughs> but it's yellow, brown, and orange. It's kind of like a, kind of like, um, it's kind of like this color. Maybe this, it's kind of like this color, but it's a little deeper, deeper with some, um, some brown. And then lime, I'm going to show you how to make lime and then sky blue. So I'm going to show you how to make sky blue without 
even having to like buy sky blue you don't have to buy sky blue if you don't want to you can if you want I don't even think I have any over here but I like to kind of mix my colors and make my colors look different and then brown black and white okay so we have brown black and white we have um, we have white over here we have black but we're gonna start with our background and of course I'm doing this I'm doing this free-handed so like I said if you're in my free group you don't have to do this free-handed you'll get a tracer so I'm gonna start with black and I'm gonna start with blue I'm gonna do the background Oh my goodness, my black is. And I like this paint because it's really, really thick. And you don't need a whole bunch. So I'm going to start with my black. And then I'm going to start with my blue. You don't need a lot. I'm just putting more black on there because I'm going to use black more um, on my canvas. And then I'm going to take my one inch brush. And I'm going to paint my entire canvas black and blue. Um you can and i'll show you how to blend a little bit if you want your your sky to look like a real sky if you want it to look different but i want mine to look dark so we're just going to kind of dip it into blue and dip it into black and we're going to go for it all right here we go i like to start at the top and sometimes i'll just start at the top and work my way down and you can actually do this with a chip brush too if you wanted to if you wanted to make more coverage if you wanted to like do this really really fast um but that's okay and i'm doing this on an 11 by 14 i believe this is a flat canvas i do like the flat canvases because i can put them on the on the on here very well and paint on them we're just simply filling our background with black and blue And you want to get enough on your paintbrush to cover your whole entire background. So that's kind of all we're doing right now is we're just covering our black background, background, <laughs> our background with blue and black. Now, in some places, you might want to do a little more blue. Maybe you want to do blue up here a little bit more. Um, and then if you want to, you can go back with your dry brush and just, or your dry brush, yes. And you can kind of come in here and do a little more smoothing of this. And it is going to be a little dark. Um, if you want to do more blue than black, you can. You can just kind of come in here and do a little more black. You can't really see the blue because like I said it's a dark it's a dark painting um, this would be even cool if you did it on like if you got a black canvas and just did black canvas but you will have to like outline everything with white first before you start and that's kind of how what we're gonna do once we're done with this I'm gonna outline everything with white um, and then um, I probably should have got a chip brush Hey babe. Yep. Can you close that door over there? Yep. <laughs> just like really loud. I can like hear him, but I'm sure no one else can. <laughs> All right. So we're just gonna paint this whole background, and then I'm gonna kind of dry this with a, a hair dryer because it's gonna take a while for it to actually um, dry because it you know it is the whole canvas so I'm just gonna come in here and I totally just ran out of black here all right and what I like about this paint it does really it does cover it pretty good I am gonna go back and do a little bit of more blue because I do want the blue to kind of show through so we're just gonna come in here and finish this up. I'm gonna, put that in. I'm gonna grab another dry brush. I'm gonna make it a little more blue. Actually, I'm gonna put some blue up here. 
So if you want the blue to kind of show through, you kind of want to just put a whole bunch on there. There's a little blue on there. You can kind of see it. We're going to finish this up on the bottom. And then I'm just going to take a hair dryer and dry it real quick. Almost done covering the whole entire canvas. I'm just kind of doing blue and black for the whole entire canvas. Go. Almost done. And I just want to make sure I get all of my canvas here because you don't want to leave any white spaces because this is a dark, a dark painting. Okay. There's some blue in there. You can kind of see the blue. Um, probably not on camera, but I can see it where I'm at right here. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I can come back in here and do a little more blue if I wanted to, like if I wanted to put some blue up here, because this is going to be my sky up here. All right. It's a little dark, but that's okay. Don't panic. It's going to be okay. Because um, I'm going to show you how to go over this with white. But let me go ahead and grab my <clears throat> hair dryer. I was trying to think of what this was that I had in my hand. Um, let me go ahead and grab my hair dryer. And I'm just going to kind of on cool. So you want to make sure it's on cool. Do not put it on heat because it will melt whatever you're trying to dry. But make sure it's on cool. And then I usually just do it on low. Oh, it's not. <laughs> it would help if I actually had it. There. So just put it on low. And just kind of come in here and dry this. You could do it on high too, but I like to do it on low because I want to make sure each portion of this gets dried. Because you're going to want to put white over it. watching just say hey I'm here I'm watching um, I just put a little message in the chat box It's okay if you get some white spots because you're just going to kind of go over it with the, the green part, this green part right here. You're going to kind of just go over it anyways. So no big deal if you just get some white spots. It can be filled in later if you want. Okay, this thing's going on high for a minute. So I can hurry up and make this thing. Well, 
upside down head first. Even if I go over it with wide, it'll be fine. dry I think we'll be okay um so now what we're gonna do is we're going to start with our hump of green right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um oops we're gonna go ahead and do some line paint but first we're just gonna do white so what I like to do anytime I'm trying to paint from on dark I use a lighter color, so I like to use white. So we're just gonna kind of use um, this antique white because I want it to look kind of antique-ish. Um, and we're just gonna start from this side and do like a small little hump here. Super easy. I'm just gonna take my, I'm actually gonna take my um, one inch brush. So let me take my one inch brush here you want to take your one inch brush, make sure it's got all that black off of there. And I'm just going to take it and put it some, some white paint on it. So I'm going to take some white paint and I'm just going to do kind of like a half circle here. So I'm going to start on this edge over here and I'm just going to do a half circle here. And you'll, you'll notice when I, when I teach how to paint something, I always teach in shapes and I always try to um, show people in shapes because it's just for me, I mean, maybe, maybe not for everybody, but for me, it just makes it a lot, a lot easier to explain. So you're just going to do like a big C, like kind of like an arch over to the other side so you're gonna start on this side and then go over on the other side it doesn't matter how how small or big you just want to make sure it doesn't take up your whole entire canvas so you want it to be at least like maybe like right here and just do it on the bottom part and I'm doing white first because I want my colors to pop and I want my colors to show up on my canvas my dark canvas that I just painted black and blue so that's kind of why I do the white. And then you're just going to kind of fill it in. It's going to look kind of gray. That's totally okay. Don't worry about it. It at all it'll all come together. So I'm just using white to build my um to build my little hump here. All right. Taking off All right, I need more paint. Oops, I got white paint over here, that's okay. Oh no, I'm just gonna take my finger and fix that. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take my white paint again. I'm just gonna do one, I think I'll just do one layer and if it doesn't come out the way that I like, then I'll do another layer. Have a good day. So there we go. And it's okay if it's gray. If you feel more comfortable going back over it with some more white, you can. I like I like to let this dry. So you're gonna wanna let this dry for a minute because you don't wanna go into your into your paint um, without um, letting it dry so you can have your colors more vibrant. Uh, when you go back over it with the green. I'm going to show you how to make lime green. So we're going to make lime green. I'm going to show you how to make it. All right. So to make lime green, what you're going to need, this way this dries. What you're going to need is you're going to need green. So green. So you're going to need one, two. I just like to do dots. I'm three, four, five, five. Actually, it needs eights. Six, seven, eight. And this is kind of how I teach. I just teach with dots. 
it's easier because when you see, when you go and look at the instructions that I um, put out there, yes, I do like um, one eighth of green and then seven eighths of yellow. You're going to want more yellow, so we're going to do um, seven eighths of yellow, which is like a lot more than that. So it's a lot more than eight. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And I just do 10 little, actually, let's do nine. And I kind of just guesstimate what I have here. And then I mix those together. Kind of get a lime green. It's not quite the lime green I want. So what, what I need to do is I need to add more. Sometimes I have to add more or add less, um, depending on, because that's a little more of a green. That's like a green green. That's not like a lime green. Um, so it does require a lot more yellow. Just add five more. Maybe that'll work. It does require a lot more yellow because it is a lime green. There we go. That's the lime green I want. You could also do neon colors. I think it'd be really cool to do like a neon color. It's not quite the green that I am looking for. So if you want to lighten it up a little bit, just grab some white over here. Just going to grab some white and do that. It does need a little more yellow though, because I'm not liking that. So you do need to put a little more yellow in there. Like I said, I just kind of guesstimate and I kind of just put enough in there to figure out what color I want. This is kind of the color that I want, so I'm going to grab that. Grab that over here. And I kind of just play with my color for a little bit. I just kind of play with my colors and that's all you're doing. You're just playing with your colors and figuring out which one you want to use. I'm going to grab some white, put a little white in that. There we go. That's kind of like what I want. Let's see. And then I kind of put it on my, my canvas just to kind of tell whether that, yep, that's the color I want. So this is the color I want because it's the lime green that I like. You could also, if you have sour apple, this would work too. So if you use sour apple, you can use that too. So now that we have our green, let's go ahead and take our, yet again, our brush that we use for white. So we're gonna take our one inch brush, our large brush. We're gonna dip some of that in the, ooh, got the black in there, uh-oh. Let's dip that in our green. And you see how I'm already getting the black up from the background? It's because I didn't let my white dry. So we're going to just let our white dry a little bit longer. Um, I'm actually going to grab some more of this and then make this my lime green here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to have to let this dry for a minute because it's you know too wet. So let's go ahead and dry it. You see, I was not dried it, and it's showing the black. digging that color though all right so some of that's white is done so let's go ahead and go over it with it's doing it again okay we're just going to cover it up we're just going to do the same thing we did with the white we're going to come in here and just do another hump and it's okay if your white isn't all the way dry 
as you can see, my white wasn't all the way dry, so we're just going to make more green here. Actually, I really think it's because of that paint. It's not really... I had never used this paint, this acrylic paint, before, so um, I usually just use Deco Art. It's actually wiping off, so maybe not the best paint to use on a canvas. I'm going to grab some more of the green. I'm actually going to do a little bit of the dark green in here. I do like the contrast between the dark and the light. I'm just going to grab this. I really think it was that white that I was using. Because it was like picking up off the background here. Which is totally okay. Because um, I can back, go back over it with the green. And just use a different white. This one does not want to run away. So if I wanted to come in here and just make my hump here a little more green. I can't. All right. So this is good. We can let this dry for a minute. And even if you wanted to go back in with like a different green color, you could to kind of lighten it up in some spots. Um, you could probably do some highlighting like up here at the top with when we put the um, the leaves and stuff and the pumpkins and everything on there. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step will be to let's do um, let's see let's do our um, Let's do our moon. Let's go ahead and get our moon up there. I'm going to go ahead and do my moon. I'm going to go rinse my brush. I'm probably going to need more different water here because this is getting yucky. So we'll go ahead and let's do our moon. We're going to put our moon up here in the corner. So I always get this question, I'll go, how do you do a moon? Like, how do you make a moon? And... Um, you can use a stamper so they you have like those foam stampers you can use a stamper if you don't feel comfortable doing circles like I always have a hard time with circles but um, I'm going to show you here how I do a moon and how I do a circle so really what a circle is it's just two halves it's like literally two C's one's backwards and one's just the regular way um, if that makes any sense. So pretty much all I do is I start at my top and then I just make a C, right? And then I do the same, I start at the same place and then I do a backwards C. So that's pretty much how to do a moon. It's literally a C and then a backwards C. There's no wrong way of doing it. Um, Oh, I got green in that one. There's no wrong way of doing it. That's just kind of how I do it. Uh, you can use a you can you can use a circle stamp if you wanted to. If you feel more comfortable using a circle stamp sponge, um, I don't think I have any to show you what they look like. Um, I've seen people use those sponges. Um, because it does make it easier and then I kind of just do a swirly in the middle so I kind of just do the swirly in the middle like so to kind of give it that swirl look and because we're doing the moon on a black background it's gonna show some of the black is going to show through and that's okay because the moon does have some spots on it that are a little gray and there you go there's your moon all right, so also if you wanted to do a little bit of a yellow on your moon, you could do a little yellow on your moon. Um, I would suggest doing like a lighter yellow, so maybe like a buttermilk yellow or something. Um, you could do that too, or if you just want to leave it this way, you can as well. So like you could put a little bit of yellow if you wanted to in your moon. Um, I would say buttermilk. So let me show you. It's 
So I sometimes just use buttermilk for my moon. And all I do is just take a little bit of it and I can come in here and just do some highlighting. Sometimes it'll show up, especially on black, it's kind of hard, but. And if you wanted to do some highlighting, you can to kind of make your moon look like it has craters on it or whatnot. So. All right. And of course, you guys know me when I'm painting, I always have to use glitter. So when we're done, I'm gonna show you how to use glitter on this one. I'm super excited. I love using glitter. I get so giddy when I get to use glitter. Anyways. <laughs> All right. So let's go on to our tree. Now, a lot of people have, like, a lot of people have apprehensive about doing trees by hand. Um, and I'm going to show you a really easy way to do a tree. Because um, for the longest time, I had a hard time doing trees until I learned a certain way of doing them. And what I like to do is I like to outline my tree with white first. So we're going to outline it with white and then we'll go back over it with brown. Now I may need another plate so you might have to, um, I might have to pause for a minute to go grab another plate. So let me grab another plate and that will help that dry a little bit faster too while we wait. Now, trees can be very, very intimidating, and but I love I love doing trees. So I'm actually going to show you how to do this the easy way. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my oh, that's a lot of white, but it's okay. Some of my white, and then I'm using burnt ombre because I want my I want my tree to be a little bit dark, but not like totally dark to where you can't see it. That's out. Ooh, that one's out. That one's done. Okay. So I like to take my round brush. And what I like to do is I like to um, dip it in my white and my brown. So I'm just going to dip my white and my brown. More my white than my brown because I want my tree to show up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just take. Let's see, we're going to go about halfway right here. So we're going to do halfway. I just like to do a straight up. So I just do straight up. This is kind of where I'm planting my trees. So I'm just doing my, my trunk. So your trunk is going to be bigger than your, um, your branches. So what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of come in here and just do, it doesn't matter where you go with it, just straight up. And it doesn't have to be straight. Okay. So you're just going to go all the way straight up. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring out my branch this way, and then I'm going to go back and fill in my, my tree. I'm not going to do the tree trunk and then do that because I want to place my branches where I want them. So I can start on this side. You can start wherever you want, and I'm just going to kind of come in here and do like a, a curve. So you're just going to do a curve, and then you're going to curve up. That's all you're going to do. You're going to do like curve up. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go a little further over and I'm going to do, I'm going to do a curve under. Okay, so I'm going to do a curve under and then we'll do a branch off of that one here in a minute. Okay, now it looks kind of wonky right now, but that's okay. Trees are not supposed to be perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to kind of branch off a little bit. So I'm going to bring this branch in a little bit. And then I'm going to branch off to the, to the top. So I'm going to go up and then curve. Okay. I will fix that in a minute. And then it's another, another branch off. So you're going to want another branch off right here. So when you bring this down, so when you come down like this with it, we're going to branch off over into the moon a little bit. Well, this one's already here. Let's go ahead and branch off into the moon a little bit. I know that looks crazy. We're going to branch off into the moon a little bit. It's okay if it's into your moon. Just going to branch off into there. 
Okay, now that I have my branches, I know it looks really, really weird right now, but I promise you it's going to look fine. Okay, so now we're going to bring this up because this is also a branch, right? And this is kind of branched off, right? So you're just going to kind of fill this one in. You're just going to fill it in. Remember, it gets smaller at the end, so you don't want to do too thick of a branch. So we're branching that one off, okay? And this one's just going to come down, and this one's going to branch off with this one. Okay? Because it's coming down. This is part of the trunk right here. And now you're just going to come in here and fill in your branches. And you want this to be a little more smaller, this little tip right here, a little more small. There we go. Just a little smaller. And then I'm also going to put another branch over here. But now you're just going to kind of fill it in. We're going to go back in and we're going to make it darker. Okay, don't worry. Make it darker. And this is kind of how I do my curly trees. I call them curly trees. This is our boo tree, though. We're just gonna kinda come in here and fill this in. We're gonna go in here with a little darker in here in a minute, once it kinda dries a little bit. We're just gonna come in here with the brown. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a tree, it's tree, it's a tree. So trees are just, they're not perfect by any means. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bitty one. So I'm going to kind of branch off over here. So you can make little branches. So you can branch off right here. And I'm going to make one right here. See how I kind of just branched it off a little bit? And then I went from big to oh, kind of small. Small. And there we go. It looks kind of like a hollow tree almost. Like an empty hollow tree. It definitely does not have any have any leaves on it. Okay. Alright, you can even do this with you can even do this with a um, liner brush if you wanted to. If you felt more comfortable doing it with a liner brush, you can totally do this. Now you want this bottom here just to kind of bring in some of that highlights. I'm gonna rinse my brush, and we're gonna go a little bit darker with our with our with our um, with our tree so we're gonna come in here with a little bit of dark color you can even use black if you wanted to I probably will end up using some black so let's dip some of this in black and bring some of that black and brown into it to kind of give it that highlighted look but you don't want too much brown so you want to make sure you come in here with a little more brown than black you just want some of that highlighted um, tree look to it And we're going to bring some more brown in here. Do the brown, brown down here. So you're just pretty much filling in your, your tree the way that you want it. Some more brown in here. We're going to go in here with the brown into our, um, into our branches. So when you're coming in here, just be mindful of your line here because you want to make sure it still looks highlighted a little bit, but not too much. So you could even like come in here and do a little bit, but not like a whole bunch of brown going on because you still want that highlighted look to your tree. Like I made that little too dark on the side. That's okay. It's coming. It's coming through though. And that's kind of why I do the light first because it does give you the highlight um, that you need on this side. Now remember, I'm doing this all freehanded, and if you're in my free group, you'll get the tracer for this. You won't have to do this freehanded. Um, but it is doable. You can do it freehanded. And you see how I'm just kind of going over it lightly with the brown and then 
to kind of keep that highlighted look to it um, because I want some of the light to show through and not it and it not be like a, a lot of brown you know what I mean there we go all right we're just gonna finish up our branches here Coming in here with a little bit of brown, and I'm just using uh, burnt ombre. Go, and I can come back in here and do a little more highlights if I wanted to. I'm actually going to come down here and see what's going on with my down here. I don't know what's happening here. I think it's because I put it in green and now it's now it's gone into my I'm going to let it dry and then I'll go back over it. Um, it looks like grass almost like coming up out of my tree trunk. Okay. Let me do a little more details here. There we go. I get this I get to add this one to my tree my tree wall that I got over there all right um, now what we're gonna do I'm gonna let that dry for a minute I have to fix the bottom of my tree trunk here um, and I did it totally I did it different this time than I did last time because I think it's because I had a bigger canvas and I was able to kind of stretch my branches out. This one's on an 11 by 4 so it makes it a little bit more difficult, um, but we're going to work with it. Okay, so now we're going to wait for this to dry. I'm going to do some details on my on my trunk um, and then I'm going to I'm going to fix this down here. I don't know what happened, I think because I went into my green paint and it my green paint did not dry all the way. I am noticing that my paint's not drying as fast as it needs to be, um, which is totally okay. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start doing our skeletons, our little skeleton heads. We're just gonna figure out where we're gonna place our skeleton heads. Um, so I'm gonna do one right here, and I'm just gonna take my liner brush and I'm just gonna do a little bitty white line to kind of get it started. I'm going to do one right here, so we're going to bring down a line right here, just a little line, just itty bitty line, kind of coming off the branch, just itty bitty line coming off the branch, and there's actually a little bow right here, so, because it's tied to the tree, so we're just going to do like a little bow, it might not really show up on your canvas, and that's totally okay. Um, just a little bow to put on there and then let's go ahead and do our skeleton head so our skeleton head is kind of like a round C like this and then there's like a little small and because I have to do these smaller since it's on a smaller canvas um, I mean I guess I could do some of them bigger than others. We're just going to do a few of these and we're just placing our skeleton heads. That's pretty much what we're doing. We're placing our skeleton heads. You can place them wherever you want. I feel like I want to do one on every tree. That's just because I like want to do that, but you don't have to. Um, you can put them wherever you want. So we're going to put one right here. I'm actually going to put one like this and we're going to make this one a little more big. And it's kind of like a dot and then there we go. Um, I need a smaller paintbrush. You might need a really, really tiny paintbrush. I like to use a really, really tiny paintbrush because it does help, especially when you're doing detail work. Let me find a better brush than this. I'm not saying that this one's not good. It's just not small enough. 
this one would work. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see which one works best. Maybe also I have too much paint on my, my paintbrush too. Okay. Let's try this one again. And it's just, actually, let's do this upside down. That way I can put my hand on my canvas. It's going to be weird. No, 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 no. Okay. I was going to put it upside down, but then I realized that I can't. I can paint upside down, but I not really can not really paint upside down. All right, so what it is, is it's like, it's literally an oval. It's an oval, pretty much. And then it's like a, um, a half circle down here. I know it looks really weird. Maybe I, maybe I need to make this a little more inward. It looks really weird, but it's okay. So it's literally like a, um, it's literally a half circle and a half circle. They look like mushrooms right now, um, but I promise you they're going to look like skeleton heads here in a minute, especially when we put the black eyes on them. They're going to look like skeleton heads, although I probably should make them a less flat like that, so they might need to be more round then you know what I mean they probably need to be more round that one's a little flat here Ooh, put my arm in there of course I did so let's make this more round I could probably make it more round there we go there we go. That's a little better. Now, I mean, they look like mushrooms right now, but I promise you they're going to look like skeleton heads here in a minute when we're, when we're done. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our third one where I want, where you want it. So I'm actually going to hang it right here on this little, little branch here. So I'm going to bring it down and then I'm going to do the dot and there we go. It doesn't have to be anything complicated, just dot and, and like a line and a line for the bow. Okay. So now we're going to do the last one right here. I'm just going to do the same size. I'm going to kind of do a round head. So what you could do is you could just do a round circle, right? And then a small circle. That actually works better than what I was doing. So a circle. So like it's just a small circle and then a smaller circle on the bottom to make your skeleton head, okay? And now, you can put another one over here if you want, but we're gonna put some leaves on our, we're gonna put some leaves on our, um, our tree. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. And now I need to put an owl. Oh, there's actually a limb right here, but I don't think I wanna put a limb right there. I think I'm gonna put my owl right there. So we're going to put an owl there. Um, and an owl is just literally like shapes. So anytime I want to do an owl, I'm just going to do a round shape. So we're going to do a round shape. And I'm just going to fill it in with white and then we'll go back over it with the owl colors. I'm not going to, I think I'm going to change the owl colors on this one because I want it to be more Halloween-ish. Um, so it's literally a shape, like a, a round shape, right? And then the, the head is just a round head. So we're just going to do a round head. And this is why I like to just talk about shapes when you're, when you're, um, when you're painting because it's easier that way. And then the ears are just triangles. So you're just gonna put your ears right here. It's literally all it is. It's two circles and a triangle. And then I'll show you how to kind of make your little owl, okay? It's gonna be super easy. 
All right, so now that we have our owl placed, let's go ahead and put our pumpkin where our pumpkin needs to go. So I wanted to put my pumpkin up here, but I've actually decided to do my pumpkin right here. So I'm gonna do my pumpkin right there. I did it up here last time, but we're gonna do our pumpkin right here. So our pumpkin is just a C and then a line and then another line, like a backwards C. So that's pretty much how I do my pumpkins. Um, I usually just do an oval and then two C's on the end. And then for the stem, I like to kind of curve my stem like that. So that's kind of how I do my pumpkins. Um, that's how I've been doing them. And then you're going to fill this in, of course. You're going to fill all this in. And I like to keep the white so that I can go back over it with my orange and make it pop. Pretty much what I'm doing right now is I'm color blocking, but I'm color blocking with white because I have a dark canvas. So I have literally have a black canvas and I want my colors to pop on my, um, my canvas. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm just outlining everything and putting the, putting things where they need to go, um, in order to start painting over them. So now since my back, my, my floor right here is not dry, um, I'm going to just go ahead and start with my leaves. I'm going to start with white. I'm going to layer my, 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 I'm going to layer my paint. So I'm going to start with white and layer my paint for the leaves. Okay. Um, I just realized that there's a cat actually sitting right there in the picture. I just looked at it. I was like, wait a minute. I forgot my cat. So we're actually going to put my cat my little black cat. I'm gonna put him right here. So let's go ahead and do our black cat. So what I like to do with a cat is I'm going to just do the same thing I did with the owl. I'm gonna start with my bottom. He's gonna be a little tiny guy. Okay. And then I'm gonna start with my, and then I'm just gonna do my top. And then I'm going to do a little tail right here. That way we know that's the cat and not the owl. And then, of course, the ears. Okay. So there's our little cat. He's up in there in the corner. Um, and like I said, what I'm doing is I'm literally just going to be layering my, my paints onto my canvas. Okay. All right, now that my brown is dry, I'm actually gonna come in here and paint this. This needs to look a lot better than it did. There we go. I like that. That looks a lot better than it did. <laughs> and I'm going to go back in and do some, some different highlighting and, and such. I just had to do that because it was bothering me like really, really bad. And yeah. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to feel, fill in our little, um, eyes. And I'm actually going to show you how to do the eyes for the skeletons. I wish I'd blown this up a little bit because it just looks so tiny to me. Alright, it looks really tiny to me, so I'm like trying to move it. Okay, so what I do with skeletons faces is I just kind of come in here. And I do ovals for their eyes. So I'm going to come in here with a little. And you can actually do this with a paint pen if you wanted to. If you wanted to cheat a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and just do ovals for the eyes. 
I need like a really good liner brush, by the way. We're just doing oval for the eyes. And then I just kind of do a dot for the nose. And then for the mouth, I just kind of black it out. Like so. I don't know if you could see that. Hopefully you could see that a little bit. And you can totally do this with a paint pan if you want. You don't have to do this with um, with a paintbrush. If you feel more comfortable doing this with a paint uh, a paintbrush or not paintbrush, but um, a paint pan, I say do it. You want enough paint on your on your paintbrush though. Okay, so now we're gonna do this one up here. It's just kind of like an oval, and then an oval. And then the nose, I kind of just do something like that. And then the mouth, I I know he's kind of smiling. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's all good. He's a little bit, he's smiling a little bit. He's smizing a little bit, which I think is cool looking. That's just my opinion. I like it because it looks happy. <laughs> um, you don't have to do that. You can actually just do like zigzags if you wanted to. Um, it's totally up to you, but I want my little skeleton heads to be like happy. I don't know why. <laughs> I just want them to be happy. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm just doing little circles, like little ovals. And then for the nose, I'm just doing like a, a makeshift triangle. And then for the mouth, I'm just fill it in. Make my little guys look happy just a little bit. That one doesn't look so happy, but that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna do some details on our owl. Since our owl is pretty much dry, I am going to come in here and show you how to do the owl. Now, some people do their owl differently, but I kinda just fill it in with my brown. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna put, actually, I need a tan color, so if I need tan, I just use white. Um, I'm actually gonna use a buttermilk color for this. That way we can, and then add a little bit of brown to it. So you can add white if you want. Um, I need a better detail brush. I do not like this detail brush. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna dip it in the brown a little bit. I don't want a lot of brown in this because I still want it to be kind of like tan. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're just, I'm going to actually turn this around. Um, you're going to come in here and just do like an oval shape. Now I want my, I want my, um, oops, that's too much. Just do an oval shape right here for its belly. I want my, um, my, owl to be different so if you're going to do this the traditional way you would just do um you would just do the brown and you would do like an oval over here like you would do like an oval so i would do like if i wanted just a traditional i would do an oval for the for the um like I would do an oval over here and then I would do an oval over here for the, the wings. But here's the thing. I'm not traditional, so we're going to do this in a different color. And you're going to be like, why are you doing it? But I'm doing it because I like to do fun things. I'm actually going to use purple for my, for my little owl here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And it's the same concept. I'm going to come in here with some purple. For its, for its body. Because I like to be non-traditional and I like to kind of make my stuff different than anything else. So we're going to come in here with a little bit of purple. And that's a little lighter purple. And that's okay. You would do this with brown. If you wanted a traditional owl, you would do this with brown. Like I said, I'm doing this non-traditionally. So I'm doing purple. And I'm going to go in there with a little bit of black and kind of, and kind of like make my lines 
different. So now I'm going to come in here with instead of purple instead of brown, I'm going to come in here with my purple in color. My whole entire um, owl purple. And I'm coming here, I'll come in here and do a little more the detail work here. And then because I want my owl to be purple, I'm just going to do the whole head purple. And then I'm going to show you how to go over it with the white. So we're just going to do purple all the way through. And you would just do brown. You would just color it brown. So like I said, I want a non-traditional owl. I want my owl to look different. So um, totally up to you what you want to do. And then I'm going to come in here with some black and do some detail work. I'm actually going to do the owl's face. So his face is going to be the same color I used right there. So pretty much all it is is two circles. So it's like this, which it's not going to show up because it's one, two. It's pretty much all it is is two circles in the middle of your owl. They're kind of come to close together. I'm going to go back over it with some black, um, some black here in a minute, and I'm going to show you how to do that with cool tip and then his nose is kind of just a line so you're just going to do like a little line down but it's orange so we're going to do orange relax so I'm just going to bring down a line like so and there you go there's your little owl when he dries a little bit I'm going to go back in with some detail I'm going to do some detail work on him um but there's your little owl. All right, once he dries, I'm gonna go back and do his eyes and then I'll put some little feathers in him. He's super cute, I like it. He looks cute. <laughs> um, he looks like he's about to fly away, by the way. I was just looking at it, I was like, hmm, he looks like he's about to fly away. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go in here and do, um, let's do our, our pumpkins or our one pumpkin, and we're gonna put pumpkins down here too. So let's do our pumpkin here. Now, like I said, I'm not a traditional pumpkin, uh, pea, or pum I'm not a traditional pumpkin, like I, I love the orange, thought of the orange pumpkins, but I'm gonna be untraditional today, so. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> let's go and do teal for our pumpkin. Like I said, we're gonna make this our own. You can totally do orange if you want to do orange. I'm not saying you don't have to do what I'm doing. So we're just because we want to make this like untraditional from as far as like how I want to do it. I'm just going to come in here and paint my little teal pumpkin here. Little teal guy. Like I said, I don't want to be traditional. I don't want to just have a orange pumpkin. I will have some orange pumpkins down here. I just didn't want any orange pumpkins. Um, but I'm just pretty much filling this in. And then I'll go back over it with white to kind of bring it all together. I just wanted to fill this in with the teal. There's my little pumpkin. I'm gonna come back in here with the lines and do a little bit of shadow work, okay? So I'm gonna take my yellow, my white, and I'm just gonna kinda of come in here and do a little shadow work. Kinda of mix that blue, the light blue. It's not quite teal color, but, um, It's peeled. Not yet. Okay. And then I'm just going to do the stem, the brown, the usual brown color to it. Okay. 
There we go. Like I said, this is not a traditional painting for me. So I'm going to come in here with the brown. Okay. I'm going to come in here and do the brown. There we go. Okay, so we have our, our pumpkin. All right. All right, now we're going to do the pumpkins down here. So we're going to go ahead and place our pumpkins. Like I said, we're going to use white. So I'm going to do this one right here. We're going to do one, two, three, four. We're going to do four. So I'm going to do one right here. So it's literally a C, a circle, and then a circle. Now, my paint is still wet, which is super annoying, but it's okay. Right. And then I like to kind of curve my stem there. Or you can just put a stump if you want to do a stump. You can. Um, I'm not digging that. That's not looking good right there. I can, I'm going to fix that here in a minute. Okay, so there's your number one pumpkin. Now I want to make a batter pumpkin. So I'm actually going to do one right here and we're going to make it a little fatter. So kind of going into the other pumpkin a little bit. But he's a little fatter. Okay. There we go. There's our second pumpkin down there. All right. And then we're going to make this one tall. So we're going to do a tall pumpkin right here. Like I said, just oval. And then he's going to be tall. So we're just going to do there we go. And there's the tall one. And I'm just going to do a stump on him. And these are going to have faces on them. So I'm actually going to put a face on this one. Maybe not. Maybe not. I won't put a face on that one. And then the last one's going to kind of go into that one. So we're going to do a circle. And then we're going to kind of just do a small. There we go. All right, so there's our three pump or four pumpkins, okay? And then you're just gonna fill those in with the colors that you want. If you wanna do, if you wanna do orange, you can do orange. Um, I might do a few orange, and then I might do a few like a teal color, um, and then maybe just a white pumpkin, maybe like a tan pumpkin or whatnot. Um, totally up to you what you wanna do. It is your painting. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna come up here and do our owl owl's eye. So I'm going to just dip this in the black. Actually, let's go ahead and take the, let me see if this is going to be good enough. It should be. Okay. I'm going to take the back of one of our large brushes. And we're just going to dip it in, in the black. And we're just going to come in here and just put an eye onto your owl. So that's just kind of how I do it. Um, on the back of your paintbrush, it's a very cool like way to um, make your owl eyes. Now I might have to come in here and do some touch-up paint because I kind of messed it up a little bit. Okay, he looks kind of weird. Well, whatever. He's an owl. And then I'm gonna come in here and do some brown on my chest on the chest of the owl going to kind of do some wisps wisps here to kind of give it some hair a little bit maybe that's too much that was too much try that again just like some dots here or there just to kind of give it some texture color to it or texture to it all right our owl is done all right, now we have to do our um, our pumpkins and our, our cats. So let's go ahead and do our cat. Now our cat is going 
I don't think if our cat is going to have eyes. Yeah, our cat's going to have eyes. But we're going to go ahead and paint it black. So we're going to paint our cat black. Now, it's not going to be easy to see the cat. So we're going to have to do some, some white highlights to the cat so that we know that it's there. I just wanted to place it there. That way we knew it was there. And I'll do some white highlights to kind of like let it stand out a little bit. So he's kind of standing out a little bit right now, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of go back over it with um with making a little face. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay. Because you really can't see him. Um, so we're going to go back and redo his face. And this is something that kids can do. I mean, adults can do. Anybody can do. All right. Let's go ahead and do one pumpkin. This color, the, the orange. I think I'm going to do the middle pumpkin. Make the middle pumpkin orange. Now, if you don't have pumpkin orange, let's say you run out or you just don't have it, I'm going to show you how to make um, I'm going to show you how to make it here. So let's say I run out of pumpkin orange. So how you're going to make pumpkin orange is it's going to be um, you're going to take your orange. So uh, just two squirts of orange and then you're going to take your red and you're going to just do a dot of red and then that kind of makes a pumpkin orange see how it makes like a, a pumpkin orange so then you can just use this orange and that's kind of how you make pumpkin orange now, if you wanted to make it like a spice orange, you can add a little bit of brown to your paint. Okay, so there's my pumpkin. That's my orange pumpkin. Now, of course, I have to do non-traditional pumpkin. I'm actually going to do a better teal than that. So we're going to go in here and do a peacock teal. I like that one better. I might actually come up there and redo that one. We're going to do a teal color. Teal color pumpkin. Like I said, I don't want to be traditional. I want to do it differently than I did it last time. Oops, I dipped into the blue. Let's see. This is a mess. So I'm doing... The non-traditional teal pumpkin. We're doing a non-traditional teal, teal pumpkin. Okay. We're almost done. We just got to do our leaves. I know. It's, I feel like I've been on here forever. But we're just going to go ahead and do our leaves. Um, I think I'll make two orange pumpkins. And then I'll do a purple pumpkin at the end. So let's go ahead and do another orange pumpkin here. And I don't think I'm going to put faces on mine. I mean, you can if you want. Um, jack o lantern faces are pretty cool if you want to put them on there. I just wanted to make this, like, less work for you guys. I feel like I've been on here forever. So I'm trying to hurry up because I've passed my time. Okay. So we have a... Our pumpkin... There's our orange pumpkin, and then we're just going to come in here with a purple. I don't know. Maybe not do purple. Maybe not. Let's do the um, the off-white pumpkin. I want to do an off-white pumpkin. So let's go ahead and do a off-white pumpkin to kind of make it look untraditional. Okay. So I'm just going to do off-white It's 
it's going to kind of look like white. I'm going to come in here and do some brown. Oops. I'll just take some of the orange. Whatever. Okay. It's a little off white. Let's do some brown. I'm going to dip this in my brown and do a little bit of brown shading here. To kind of give it that, that, there we go. To kind of give that off white look to it. And then I'm going to come in here and do my stem. There we go. All right, there's my non-traditional pumpkins. All right, now we're going to do the stem here. And then a stem here. And then the stem here. All right, so there we have our pumpkins, and you can come in here and do a little more shading if you wanted to do some light work here. You could come in here and do some shade. Oops, I did not mean to do that one. I'm gonna try to get the white on that one. Oh, there we go. And then if you didn't wanna do the lines and you just wanted to do jack-o'-lanterns, you can. So I could put like um, eyes and stuff on there if I wanted to, um, but I kind of wanted to make this look tradi not traditional, but like different than what I had originally had on painted, because um, I like to make things different each time, each time that I do paintings. So um, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it the instructions that I give you. You can do it that way um, if you want. All right, so now we're going to come in here and do a hole in our tree. So there's like this little hole right here. We're just going to do a hole right here because we're going to put eyes in it. It's going to have little eyes popping out, okay? While that dries, we're going to come in here and do our cat. So I'm just going to do the cat's eyes. I'm literally not going to put eyes on my cat I'm doing just half circles so I'm just do half circle half circle and then I'm just gonna do like a little a little mouth here with the whiskers and then ears that way it's not too complicated um, you can kind of see the kitty cat sitting there um, you can also use like you can also use pink if you wanted to for the ears. I just want you to be able to see the cat there. You don't have to put a cat there. I could probably just erase the cat and it would have been fine. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can just do a simple cat just sitting there on the, on the branch. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the fun part, which is the leaves part. I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm just gonna take some of this tan color, this, oops, this color, the um, maize color, which you can use, you can use yellow. So the color that you um, would use is yellow, brown, and orange. You can mix them all together and you'll get that color. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do our leaves. I'm just gonna, oh, we forgot our hat. Uh-oh, forgot our witch's hat. Okay, so I forgot our witch's hat. So let's go ahead and draw or, or do our witch's hat. So what I like to do for a witch's hat, I just like to do like an oval like so, and then I kind of just do a wiggle up. So I kind of wiggle it up, and then the, that's kind of how I do my witch's hat. And then I fill it in. I totally forgot to do the witch's hat. I'm sorry, guys. And then I fill this one in. Not really going to see much of it because it's, you know, going into the black a little bit, but it's there. Oh, it looks kind of funky. Hold on. Let me fix this. Let me bring it out a little more. There we go. It looks kind of funky for a minute. I was like, whoa, what's going on? And that's kind of easy way to do a witch's hat. 
and then I'll go through and put the buckle on it after I'm done with the leaves. So let's go ahead and do the leaves. We're going to take our round brush and we're just going to, we're going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. So I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. I'm going to dip it in this first color and I'm just going to come in here and just do several leaves. I'm, I'm just pressing down. All I'm doing is pressing down like this and kind of going back and forth. Now my green's not all the way dry, which is totally okay, but I'm just kind of coming in here and doing my, my yellow leaves first. And you just kind of put them wherever you want. Um, you can also put them on the branches if you want. So like if I wanted to put mine on branches, I could. Um, there's no wrong way of doing it. I'm just kind of pressing down and flattening my, um, my brush a little bit. And then without rinsing your brush, just, you know, kind of go back over them with like an orange color or a red color. Like I said, you can just do leaves wherever you want. There's no wrong way of doing it. I'm kind of just putting them wherever um, and just pressing down and lifting up, pressing down and lifting up, pressing down and lifting up. It's pretty much how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to go back in here with some orange. I'm going to do the same pressing down without um, taking anything off my brush. I'm just, Coming in here and doing more leaves. Just kind of like in a pattern, however you want to do it. There's no wrong way of doing it. I kind of just go in with like almost like a pattern kind of like after I'm like done with the ones that I already did. Like I said, there's no wrong way of doing this. This is the fun part. This is like probably like my favorite part is doing leaves. Like I said, oh, we need some up here. Almost forgot up there. Just put them wherever you feel comfortable putting them. You don't have to like, there's like I said, there's no like really wrong way of doing this. And I'm just using my paintbrush and I'm going through, I can even come in here and do a little bit of other colors. And then I, I'm going to come back in here and do a little more red too. It's super easy. It's super fun. Now I'm going to grab my red. I'm going to take my red and I'm going to do some red. Without rinsing my brush, you can kind of wipe your brush off a little bit if you want to get some of that paint off. Without rinsing your brush, just go back over there with red. I really like this part because it's like the creative part that I like. Because I feel like it gets you in a creative mood to just create whatever is there, right? And it doesn't have to look nice and neat. That's kind of why I like it. Here we go. There's your leaves. And then you can kind of come in here and do a little more leaf work if you want. If you wanted to come in here and do some more leaf work, you could. And then now we're going to go ahead and put our little two little two little eyes in our little black spot here. So I'm just going to take the back of my paintbrush. I'm going to do little white eyes. So I'm going to do one and two. Okay. So two little black two little white eyes 
And then I'm going to come in here with my tiny, tiny brush, paintbrush, and I'm going to do black on the back side. And I'm going to kind of make them look like they're looking up. Oops, nope, i got to wait for it to dry. So wait for it to dry first. <laughs> and then while that dries, we're going to go ahead and do our buckle on our witch's hat. So we're just going to do a square here. There we go. And there's a little buckle for the, the hat. And then if you want to do some, some highlighting, you can. There we go. And then if you want to kind of just play around with the colors, you can. I see that I don't have any leaves over here, so I want to put some leaves over here. So I'm going to just put some leaves right here. And there you go. All right. I don't know why it sounds like there's something playing. Super weird. Okay. Now, hopefully that's dry. And if it's not, then I just go and do it later. Um, go ahead and put your black eyes in here. Little black eyes. It's not dry yet, so I have to wait till it like fully dries. <laughs> it's not 100% dry. Okay, we're gonna redo that one. It's not 100% dry, so I kind of whooped it up here. Okay, we'll try that again. Here in a minute. Let's go ahead and dry it. I forgot my little blue swirlies. So to do the blue swirlies, you're going to want to, I'm going to dip into the teal. I'm actually going to use a paint pen for this because I think this will be better to use for a paint pen. So I'm actually going to use a paint pen for this. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm going to do the swirlies in the background. So I'm going to take like this color, I think. I'm just going to do little swirlies in the back, in the background of my canvas painting here. So they're just like little swirlies, nothing like too extravagant. There we go. But it kind of brings the page together a little, or the, of the painting a little together a little bit. I think it does. And it kind of brings like it all together and then what you could do is you can come in here and if you really wanted to put like jack-o-lantern jack lanterns on your um on your your or faces on your your pumpkins you can actually go and use a paint pen for that too so um hopefully this is dry i'm really kind of upset that it's not drying all right <laughs> Let's try this again with the back of our paintbrush. Take it and do our eyes. So one, two, okay. All right, and then I think I'm just gonna put a dot, black dot there. And then you can take your paintbrush and just do a black dot. Oh, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to wait till it dries. So you're gonna wait till it dries. Um, let's see if we can get it
guys, we're going to put glitter on our painting. Um, I like to use, uh, usually I use crystal ball, but hold on, I don't know. It's not on this roundabout. Let me see if it's on the other roundabout. Okay. Woo. I felt like that took forever, guys. At least took me two hours to do it almost, like an hour and a half maybe. I think if I didn't kept, if I didn't stop like and stopping and doing things, it would have been a lot less. All right, so I'm just gonna put some glitter in my moon. So I kind of just use my finger and just spread the glitter everywhere. And then I'm gonna put some down here. Kind of just put it wherever you want to put it. I kind of just want to put it. I would put it everywhere if I if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna put some down here, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna put some in my pumpkin a little bit. So I just kind of use my finger over wherever you want it, okay? And there you have it. There is your boo tree painting. Hope this was helpful. I'm actually going to come in here and do my do my dots. Maybe it's dry enough where I can do it. It'll let me. It won't let me. Okay. Dot. Maybe not. <laughs> and a dot. Oh, well. I'll have to come back in there and do it later. It's being a pain. But there you have it. There is our boo tree painting. I hope this was fun. Um, I know it took a little bit for me to get it to get like everything done on it. Um, it did take an hour and a half to do this, which I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, you can add whatever you want. You can, you can, um, do it however you want to do it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, just so you know, a little bit of announcements going on in October. October is booked, guys. Like, I am totally booked out almost in October. I think we have an event every single week. Our first event is October 5th. Um, so we're going to be at Frisbee Cellars in Rancho Mission Viejo. Um, if you do sign up for that one, just let me know and, uh, I have, to, I'm going to send you instructions of how to get there. This is a new venue that we were doing, but, um, there are still seats left. There's like four seats left. We're almost, um, hopefully booked out on that one, but there are four seats left on the October 5th, uh, um, paint party. And we're doing the sunflower and the stacked pumpkin, just going to be super fun because it's going to be um it's going to be great for thanksgiving and then we have the black light paint party which i'm almost sold out on we only have a few seats left on that one that one's going to be the haunted house it's we're going to do it in black paint we're going to actually do a black light party it's going to be super fun i cannot wait we're almost sold out we only have a few tickets left i think we are like only have like three tickets left guys so if you want to get in on that one and you're in San Clemente, it'll be at Lost Winds in San Clemente. And I will go ahead and just put my, um, my, um, website here that, and the shop to kind of, you know, give you guys a place where to go to get that. Now, if you sign up early, you will get $5 off your ticket. So make sure you sign up early. Ticket sales ends one week prior to each event. So um, unfortunately, the Frisbee Sellers one is already, um, the discount's already gone for that. So you want to go ahead and sign up for it. Go ahead and sign up for it. But the paint party one, the, the black light paint party one, that one is almost sold out. So you're going to want to go ahead and grab your tickets for that one. It's going to be at Lost Winds in San Clemente. And then now we're doing, now we're doing these pop-up paint parties and we're going, I mean, we've been doing it for a while, but now they're kind of stepping up a little bit. Like we're, we're doing more. And so we have two more events going on. We have the night market at the Pharmacus Farms. That's going to be on October 14th. And that one is going to be, um, that one is going to be painter's choice. So you get to paint between, I don't know if I have it on my wall. 
Um, you get to pay between the Witch's Inn and um, I'm trying to think of what the other one is. The Witch's Inn and then um, the Three Witches. So it is a witch theme. It is um, going to be so fun. We have the kids one, which is the witches in one. And then we have the three witches. Um, that one is going to be on 11 by 14 like this. And you're going to be able to frame it and everything else. And those, I actually have a family package for you guys. It's $100 for four people in the family. So four people, if you sign up underneath the family package, make sure you go ahead and get that family package deal. That way you can come and um, spend time with your kids and just, you know, I think they're going to have a pumpkin patch. I also think they're going to have, it's going to be like a, a harvest festival, um, but I am doing a witch's theme for that one. So that one's on October 14th. If you are in San Clemente or San Juan Capistrano, California, or you're in Mission Viejo, California, or even if you're in Los Angeles, you can come down and paint with us. It's going to be super fun. It's family friendly. Um, they're going to have all the animals there at the farm. They're also going to have other vendors. So um, just make sure if you come, you make sure that your kids, like you have to stay with your kids if they're 12 and under or 10 and under, sorry. So if you have kids that are 10 and under, you have to stay at the booth. But it's a great way to sh kind of shop around the local foods and local area and um, support your community. So that's going to be October 14th. That is on a Saturday and we'll be there between 4 and 9. This is the night market, so it's going to be at night. So make sure you spray yourself with um, mosquito, whatever it's called, um, because the mosquitoes are out here still in um southern california which is super odd but whatever <laughs> um and then we have seats left for our next event which is going to be at artifacts on the 21st of october this one's going to actually be a costume um i'm doing a costume um i'm doing a costume contest so whoever comes to my booth and they they are dressed up in their costume they're going to get a ticket and then the whoever you know you're, you're it's going to be a giveaway so i'm doing a costume contest we are doing a paint uh, we're doing a paint night we're doing a painting party in the day and artifacts actually is having a costume party at night so we're going to be painting and there's going to be vendors there's going to be a lot of stuff going on during the day so you can bring the family and then later on and at artifacts you can you can come and hang out as they're gonna do an adult um, costume party so it's gonna be super fun um, but those are some of the things that are going on in October I am actually going to be doing I'm gonna try to do a painting tutorial every single week um, going to try I may not succeed but we're gonna try to do one of these type of paintings every week like just some holiday paintings some fall festival paintings maybe some you know, lots and lots of pumpkins. If you don't like pumpkins, we'll do some other things. Like we're going to do a witch painting. Um, I'm actually going to do the witch painting. The one, the three, the three witches. I'm actually going to be painting them on a couple weeks here in a minute. So just come back here and see what's going on at Chrissy's Paint and Craft Parties. I appreciate you guys coming out and watching and commenting and just being here. Um, I'm super excited to be able to do these weekly because I really want to kind of um, be more present on my page, but also in my group. Um, so if you want the tracer for this group, okay, so if you really, really want the tracer for this group, let me go ahead and give you the link for you to sign into um, or to kind of get into the group, our creative space for creatives group. Um that way you can go ahead and grab this tracer if you really really want to paint this and you want to um ooh, what happened i kind of exit out of here um, if you really want to paint this the instructions and the tracer will be uploaded by the end of today so if you want to paint this you can go to um, our free group which is creative space for creatives it's kind of like a beginner's tutorial group um, I do give you like once a month paintings, but I think I'm going to do a lot more in that group. But if you want the tracer for this, you have to go over there to grab it. Um, and you have to be a member of that group to grab it. So go ahead and grab your tracer. Go over there and grab your tracer. 
and paint this yourself and I hope to see what you create. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off on here. I will see you guys next week. I'm actually going to be painting the three witches next week. So join me next week. Okay, guys. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye.